um, while everyone's in the briefing room, um, you're back. It's this nice, this very nice, shiny, white, like Apple Store-esque room. Um, the bench is gone, actually, and uh, replaced. it's replaced by like three uh, ergonomic chairs. Um, they're like kneeling chairs. Uh, yes, I am sitting in a kneeling chair, for those of you who can't see me. Um, and it's horrible. Um, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's, uh, yeah. But these chairs are, you know, nice, but uh, they look like if you sat on them, they would actually be very uncomfortable because they are like, they're not really padded. Uh, they are ergonomic. Um, but there's only three of them. And then uh, there, the, the whiteboard, this like wall that had lights on it, um, has like congratulations with some fireworks, like on like a looping video as you walk in with the server mm. and the nerve cluster. Now, uh, Carrot, uh, you 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 see these chairs. Uh, what do you what do you all do when you see these three chairs? Um, can we sit in the chairs? I want to. I mean, I want to run for the chair. <laughs> you drop you drop your corner of the server like doing like as it like yeah. it sort of hits the ground like you don't drop it i think you set it down like fast <laughs> and you go to a chair yeah these chairs aren't going to fit me i'm just like gonna stand up the server and like lean on it that's great <laughs> you I'll just like drag chair. the server over next to party <laughs> and just like <laughs> okay yeah. And A, you'll take the other chair. Sure. I'm going to run faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These legs were made for running. Great. Um, great. Okay. Yeah, you all get you all get chairs and Edward, you get to stand up. <laughs> mm. Much taller than everyone else. Much, much taller than everyone else now. Terrifyingly um, taller. Carrot, um, your boss. Uh, your, sorry, your, your uh, manager. Manager. Yep, you're not not, not my boss. <laughs> uh, walks into the room to the same uh, sort of like door behind that screen that she did before, um, and she's you know she's wearing her glasses and she just sort of gives like a limp clap like a way to go everyone we did the mission great. All right. Uh, great. Okay, we got to do the point tally, and uh, on screen uh, comes a a point tally. So we go first to Edward's points. Um, we see one thousand XP points at the very top of this graph, minus three hundred twenty five XP points, uh, and next to it is for uh, shopping dividend. <laughs> <laughs> If you all remember you got your shopping dividends earlier. Mm -hmm. So you see that three three twenty five subtract from the thousand at a sort of uh, result in the bottom. Um, you get a plus fifty for your achievement, um, the flip achievement you did, and then you get a minus five hundred. Uh, and next to that is for destruction of equipment. <laughs> uh, and carrots like. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one, but you were holding the vac when it exploded. I know it's old. It's old. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I, I actually didn't control that one. That is automated. All of these points are automated. Do not blame me. Do not blame me for your scores. And your final score of 225 comes up on screen. <laughs> and you get 225 XP points uh, in your HUD. Uh, you now have 225 more than you had before. Just gobsmacked. Mo mouth open, gobsmacked. Just like... <gasps> can't even can't even process this information um next we see squick comes up mm -hmm. on screen um, and i i think these are like little chippy cartoons of all of you at like the top of the of your columns that are coming up um squick's column comes up oh, we see a thousand xp points um mm -hmm. minus 200 um which is your shopping dividend um mm -hmm. and then you get another minus 250 <laughs> Uh, which is noted as destruction of property fan. <laughs> okay, yeah, that no, that's fair. Yeah, it's okay. Uh. It's okay. That one actually, I will tell you, you lost the points. I'm sorry, but there is another squad that had to go get that fan. So hey, they're gonna get some points for that. So hey, 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 not bad, right? Um, and you see your final total of um, five fifty on screen. Mm -hmm. and you get 550 uh, additional XP points uh, to your uh, to your head. Um, 
Cordy, your, yours comes up next. We get 1,000 XP points, minus 325 for your shopping dividend, plus 100 uh, for your achievement. Um, and that is, everyone now sees that Cordy did get, is the one that got that achievement. Um, and that brings your total to uh, 775. Uh, um, ah. and you get 775 come up in your head. And then uh, f- finally comes up A's column, 1,000 XP points, minus 300 XP points for shopping dividend, plus 50 XP points for room cleaning uh, achievement. And now uh, that brings your total to um, 750. So you are right below QWERTY. And then Carrot says... They really had us in this last one, but, uh, and then a video comes up on screen of the hollow program, Brave and Expendable. The YouTube video has just been published. Uh, And a video, a security footage video of your death does in fact appear on screen. You get your full line. There's the explosion as you just get a hole right through your back. And it like freeze frames on your face, like eyes, just like sort of like starting to lull. And there's like a fart sound effect, like like <laughs> laughter, like a lot of like you know the, a lot of you know those YouTubers who like put a lot of sound effects and a lot of graphics over. It's like that, uh, and the video ends, oh, uh, and you get horrible. that achievement plus two fifty, bringing your total to um, nine hundred fifty to nine hundred fifty. And then a little star appears next to you, and you are the most valuable troubleshooter, and uh, <laughs> in your HUD, Jesus. you see in so your HUD. Funny. Uh, there is a, another clone that uh, appears in your available clones. So you are on clone five, but you have uh, two additional clones. Ridiculous. Yeah. Edward's Why? on the verge of tears. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why? Uh, and then Carrot has sort of, while this video has been playing, um, has like walked back into the office and has like been rooting through some stuff and like throws a like syringe at you, Edward, and, uh, throws like a different like syringe and some band-aids over at you, Cordy, and is like, these for your wounds, uh, you know, it's not going to be, it's, they're not going to work very well, but you know. (laughs) What? It'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just to, you know, put the take these. You wake up in the morning. You'll be slightly better. Um, you should you should buy some medicine. You should buy some medicine later. Um, you should buy some medicine later mm. for the ones because this isn't going to work. This uh, is just basically the alien <laughs> solution. It's just it's not it's not going to work. It's just it's you, I'm just I'm, it, it's you got to take it out of your pay as a troubleshooter. I'm really sorry. It's just kind of how the job works. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Anyway. And the screen sort of cascadingly disappears. Um, And uh, Carrot sort of uh, leans against the screen as you're all sort of sitting in these, uh, as you have now been sitting in these chairs for a couple minutes watching this this data, very uncomfortable chairs. (laughs) Um, Is anyone going to do anything other than sit in these chairs? Um, So Squick, still red, um, is going to take out his qualities to broom. He's just going to sweep a little and say, so when's the next gig? Well, you're troubleshooters now, so we have you on retainer. Um, You know, we'll give you jobs probably every day. Uh, So that's your job now is your troubleshooters. So, yep, welcome to the team. Now, another very important part of this briefing is... And then um, Kara taps the screen and in enormous letters across the screen, just the words, what did we learn? (laughs) As we're doing this, I'm on my chair trying to tilt it, like when you're trying to balance right on the corner. Great. Yeah, at the edge <laughs> of falling over. Great. <laughs> Do you want to give me a roll? Hell yeah. Let's tempt fate, shall we? So unnecessarily dangerous. <laughs> I got another life. Fuck it. <laughs> it's a chair. I'm not going to say it's melee. It's just a chair. <laughs> Two athletics and brain sense. I should calculate. I think that's, it. that's exactly what I would have. Great. <laughs> Two die it is. <laughs> Plus one for computer. Boy, I really need to reprioritize next time I build the character. Woo. I'm going to fall. 
<laughs> yeah, you fall. It, it, you yeah. don't take any damage. You just fall out of the chair. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's really loud. Oh yeah, great. It at like clatters. The character. <laughs> and Carrie just like looks at you and is like. And just looks at everyone and is like, okay, what did we learn? We got to do this. This is good. This is wrong. We got to do it. This is, they make us do this. 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 While she's doing that, I'm still just like. <laughs> You're just like still teetering in the chair. <laughs> what did we learn? Um, please, please, please. <laughs> don't take air cannons from Coolbot73 and not put them back. I you know I'll put that in the I'll put that in the notes. Great. And uh Carrot is writing these down on again on paper, which is unheard of. Mm -hmm. I say the real lesson is the friends we made along the way. And Carrot is just like it just like stares at you and is like all right. <laughs> and then just write this down. <laughs> And then and Carrie, you see her like uh, under her breath. It's like yeah, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what did we learn, man? Okay, I'll put that down as nothing. All right, Edward, what did you learn? We take risks for the greater good. No, I put down nothing already. Such a fucking vegetable. I put down nothing already. It's fine. It's fine. Wow. You're good. No one reads these. Ah, <sighs> you see. My initial desire is to say that I learned nothing because fundamentally everything that I already believed was just reinforced by this journey. All hail computer, the computer will lead us, and that all those that are bathed in the light of computer are at one with what is right and just in this world. But then again, Something really did open my eyes to something completely different and unexpected, and that was that sometimes through completely no fault of your own, you can be judged and punished by great computer just by standing next to a damaged piece of machinery, not having anything to do with its destruction or its elimination, just literally being in proximity and <laughs> learning that lesson was probably the most difficult thing of all. And Tara is just like processing and is like, I'll put that down as don't break equipment. <laughs> 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 write that down. All right. So, okay. Thanks everyone. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. And then before Kara can finish saying what she's saying, um, the computer appears in all of your heads and starts speaking okay. to you all, including Kara and says, Hey, 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 this is troubleshooter squad. Hey, 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 great job. Uh, everyone. You got the server. I got my JPEGs. I got my JPEGs. Hey, Kara, can you plug that in? Can you plug that in? Can you plug that in? And Kara's like, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And Kara like goes back to the other room, brings back a very long like ethernet cable that she is just sort of unspooling and plugs into the server, um, which is, you know, we're a little worse for the wear. And the computer is like, oh, I got him. Everyone, I got him. I, I, I got him. I got him. This better be I got him. Thank you. Thank you. computer. Hey, um, this is not actually a question that I'm going to do it anyway, but uh, does anyone, would anywhere, would everyone like to see the JPEGs? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you'd actually like to see the JPEGs. Okay, great. Yeah. No, one wants to see, no one ever wants to see my JPEGs. Well, baby, I can look at every single pixel. And on screen um, come up, uh, sort of one by one in like a, like, you know, the like PowerPoint slideshows with like the Ken Burns, like they're sort of oh, like slowly God. going across the screen, mm -hmm. like very, very slightly, like fading in and out um, of just like the lowest quality, like compression lost Looney Tunes JPEGs, like Bugs Bunny, like eating a carrot with like the caption, like, what's up, doc? There's, there's like Elmer Fudd. Um, there's the one of like Tweety Bird, but with like the do-rag and it's like, I can't believe today. Um, there's one uh, that's just like Sylvester, like jumping out a window. Um, and it seems like there was maybe context to it. You don't know what it is. Um, there's one that's just like, it's like 
you know, like Granny, like the who owns Tweety Bird, like, mm-hmm. but like it's mm-hmm. cropped off like below her eyes and then like at her neck. So like, there's no, it's just completely like a useless image that someone like screenshotted for no reason. And it's just like going through all of these like shitty Looney Tunes JPEGs, like some of the memes, some of them just like screen grabs, all of them bad. Um, and uh, it's you know, it goes for it goes for like six minutes. This is like a six minute video. <laughs> as you sort of watch it and there's there's like there's a there's music playing sort of like 90s sitcom end credits type music like and it's these you just see these lineage in shape jpex what's it called i uh i elbow i imagine that squick is next to me and i elbow squick and i go can't wait to tell Bible study about this. <laughs> yeah, this sounds illuminating. This is exactly. This is exactly the kind of stuff we talk about. I'm going to make an internal note in my cortex to never go to Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to nod while I do that. That's great. That's great. Um, and this slideshow ends, and a motorcycle goes past my house. Um, the slideshow ends, and um, here it's like, well, that was fun. Bye, everyone, and just slams the door. <laughs> and <laughs> you're free to go. You can uh, you can get up and exit the room, and hey, you're done. Um, does anyone want to do anything before we end the adventure? I'm feeling good there. I think we should just uh, jump up in the air and high five. Hello, Angel. Yeah. That's great. Everyone jumps up in the air and high fives, freeze frame. Um, The computer says, hey, you know me. I'm the computer. This is the end of the adventure. And you know what we've created here today? This is the world I've dreamed of in my wildest dreams, if I dream, which I am not really clear on. Uh, One where everything that was wrong about the world is completely fixed, where everyone has what they need, and where I've got the 73 JPEGs that I desperately need, and the title of the adventure comes back on the screen when the computer says that. Somewhere outside Alpha Complex, I imagine, if there is that, birds are chirping, flowers are blooming, and nobody will ever have to see those things, ever. They'll just get to have a great time making this perfect world way more perfect. And, hey, hold on, hold on, sorry, someone's calling me. So, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, oh, the whole, cl- the whole cloning center, you're, ser- you're serious? Hold on, I'm turning on the security cameras, hold on. Fish, fish, fish? Okay, I'm making a note, I'm making a note. I'm yeah. I'm gonna get someone right on it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you for reporting. Thank you for reporting it. Thank you for reporting it. No. No. Thank you for. I'm, I can't give you XP points for this. I'm, there are limited research. Thank you for reporting it. Okay. You're welcome. Please, 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 please. Oh, sorry. Did I broadcast that audio to you? I'm so sorry. That was classified. So sorry. That was far above your security clearance. Can you please give me a sec while I wipe your brain? Cool. Thanks. Hey, can you stop running, please? My name is Percy Hornack, and today I'll be joined by the cast of Saving 73 JPEGs I Desperately Need, our paranoia story written and GM'd by Ben Ferber. We're here to talk about the campaign, the players' expectations, and how it went. Let's go around and share names, pronouns, and role in the campaign, starting with Ben. Hi, uh, I'm Ben, he, him, and uh, I GM'd. Cool, Todd. Hi, I'm Todd. I use he, him pronouns, and I played Squick, who also uses he, him pronouns. Uh, Corey. Hi, I'm Corey. Uh, she, her, I played A, goes by they, them. Uh, Mieko. I'm Mieko. Uh, she, her, and I played uh, Gordy, who goes by she, they. And Romana. Hello, my name's Romana, they, them, and I played Edward, who's also a they, them. Hell yeah. Thanks, everybody. Uh, So to get us started in our sort of debrief discussion today, I wanted to ask, what were your expectations going into the campaign? Had you heard of Paranoia before? Did you have experience with this kind of game? 
um, having read a couple different source books for different games now because of this podcast, um, I was really excited reading Paranoia because it's so wildly different. Um, it's like often antagonistic towards the reader slash player um, in a fun way that's just really like weird and sets you up for this like kind of confrontational vibe. Um, but I had not played it before. I was so happy that Ben brought it to us for this game. And yeah, it was just like a weird, fun, different, like very different style of role-playing game than I'm used to. Yeah, I was in like a similar boat. I mean, I like practically inhale D&D actual play on like all different platforms. So playing Paranoia was like, very much in line with like role playing games in general and like what I like about it. But it was also really interesting to like be thinking about skills differently and to be thinking about like the interactions with things. Like I think that the most interesting dynamic for me was like knowing that there was an all seeing all powerful thing in our heads the entire time and it not just Ben. Um, and so like, just, I think the dynamic was really interesting to play with when I'm already so well-versed in D and D and like those mechanics. Um, I've played once or twice, but it's been a hot minute. I'd never heard of paranoia before. So I came in very rusty and very clueless, but as always, like, it's just fun to like get in and learn new things and you figure it out as you go, which is fantastical. It's interesting because paranoia, you know, as everyone has said, paranoia is kind of way different from a lot of TTRPGs um, in that I think in a lot of ways it's more freeform, um, but it's freeform in the way that like it's trying to make everything really hard and really annoying, but in kind of a funny way. And um I will say from a GM perspective, it certainly is the same way because the the GM material, which like I'm the only one who has read, is also pretty uh, antagonistic towards you in that it's not that it's like, ooh, we're going to make you fuck up. But they're like, ooh, we're going to make you just improvise everything and pretend you know what you're doing and when you don't. And there's no rules like the, the rule of the game is that there are not actually rules and you have to make it seem like there are. So. What I will say is I had never GM'd before, um, and I thought that this was an interesting way to start doing it because there were no rules and it was uh, it was pretty hard <laughs> because it, what I was, you know, trying to I'm because I'm lying to all of you all the time about everything. And uh, what was amazing to me was that you all picked up on my lies like all the time and like completely saw through all of my bullshit. And what I find interesting about what happened in this campaign is that rather than pitting everyone against each other, you all unified against me, which was wonderful <laughs> because like all these characters made friends with each other and allies with each other in a way that like the game is designed to make the players uh, be enemies with each other or at least like f become factions. And um, what happened in this was it actually ended up being gr a great story that like became a much more satisfying ending where everyone with all the forces against them in different ways um, unified with each other. And that actually did make uh, the game change for me because I sort of wrote a lot of my material as expecting like, okay, this scene's going to be like probably these factions of people fighting with each other, or like maybe it'll be some like three against one or something that I don't expect. And it actually each time sort of cemented all of you together even more <laughs> in a way that like, uh, made it an interestingly linear story on what was supposed to be a nonlinear uh, narrative. Cool. And then from the players, uh, any further thoughts on how the actual experience of playing the game matched up with what you expected going into it, um, given that the consensus seems to be nobody really knew quite what to expect? I knew, because I knew, um, because as one of the one of the co-producers when we were talking with Ben about um, doing a game with us. And then he pitched a couple different games. So we like looked at them a little bit. I knew that there were things that I as a player didn't know, but I like tried to keep from my brain. Like I tried to keep outside of my brain that like 
I knew Ben would be lying to me about stuff, but I didn't want to read the GM book. And I wanted to make sure that I was like clean and pure on that about like not like metagaming in like understanding how his mechanics would or would not work. So it's hilarious that there's almost none um, to hear Ben tell it. Um, Sincerely though, the numbers are all made up. You have to make up the numbers on the fly. There is nothing that has any difficulty level other than what you feel is funny. (laughs) (laughs) That's magical. Um, I mean, I definitely, there, there's some mechanics that we didn't quite play with. Um, just cause we didn't like, we didn't roll enough computer dice to get really weird in terms of our moxie. Uh, and so I was interested in like seeing where those things might go and we didn't get there, but I still had a great time exploring this like weird world, um, that felt very then and also very not then at the same time. I actually think it's really funny that you say that you were lying to us the whole time because my character like very much was of the belief system that everything that you said was true. And like, I tried to be in the same mindset as like a player because like, I really, I really wanted to just be like everything that Ben says is true. Everything the computer says is true. So I find it very funny for you to say like, Oh, you guys saw through all my bullshit because (laughs) me as the player is kind of like plotting along, like everything's going the way it should. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Both as Edward and as like be the player. Cool. Uh, moving moving forward, um, I would love if you all could talk a little bit about character creation and the way that paranoia kind of sets it up so that you're creating divisions within the group. Um, how did that experience feel? Did you feel like there was any tension in the group during that character creation skill point assigning process? Just for the audience, I want to mention that in the book, character creation is supposed to happen 100% um, in the room uh, on the first session. We did um, what you probably heard as a part of a first episode. Um, We talked about our characters and who they were as people beforehand, and then just did the rolling and mechanics parts on day one, um, which is like not quite by the book. I'm always interested in like letting my stats um, speak for me. Uh, and this is true when I like roll up a character in something like D&D or in this, um, because those end up being like, I don't say like, oh, I'm going to make a this and they'll be like this, th-. like they'll be crafty and cunning. And then I like roll very poorly. Um, and so I wanted to wait to see who Squick would be until I had a better idea of what his skills would be. And he was like, really good with mechanics and not a lot else. Um, and so I was like, okay, great. Like, let's do that. Who's, who's like a dumb, not quite charming person, but who can fix stuff for you real good, including sweeping real well. Um, and so I decided to just lean into that as we kept going. And like, because, um, as an infrared, he was like a janitor, uh, then being promoted to red and using like, uh, in advance experience points to be able to purchase stuff. I was like, hell yeah, we're getting a broom. I don't know what I'm going to use a broom for in this campaign, but like, of course, this is what this guy would want to do. I've never Um, seen that many bristles in my life. (laughs) Um, so for me, I had like a vague idea of what I wanted to do for my character. Um, because when we were creating the names, I knew that I wanted to have like a natural animosity to A and everything else kind of happened in the room. When we asked about, uh, physicality, I was like, let me figure out what I want to do. That's kind of at odds with other people. So I was like, what about if QWERTY was a very angry Simone Biles? And (laughs) so, so going from there and then also going from, I had the, I had my, uh, Ben sent me an email about my secret society and, um, my power. So going from all of these things, I kind of built the character. I guess for me, I just wanted to be as authentic to myself as possible. And just like, especially because like, I'm not as seasoned a player. And I was like, I'm going to forget what I'm doing. It's been a minute since done any shows and things. So like, let's just haphazardly create 
what I am, which is just like, I don't know how I got here. Apparently I'm good at stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And now I'm in charge of people and somehow I became yellow and now I'm not. And I don't know why. <laughs> I'm really sorry. And also I just say A a lot as that's just the thing. I just wanted to keep it like authentic, but also like be a little bit of a troll. And I would have done more stuff, but I fucking hated Pleat. Pleat can go suck a bag of dicks all at once and choke on him. Ooh. It was like, I was out to be like, oh yeah, we're going to like get weird and like fuck people over. And then I met that asshole and was like, no, my goal is to just fuck you up. I hate you so oh, much. How much you all hate I will go to church <laughs> because I hate you. I made her Ooh. talk more because you all hated her so much. Pleat made me found com- Pleat made me find computer Jesus. <laughs> I'm a born again computer first. Yeah, I mean, after reading the handbook, I kind of like took to heart that entire philosophy of like going to extremes and being antagonistic. And so my like you see computer world and I thought hacker and then you think extreme and I went born again Christian. So I was like, how can I be a born again Christian hacker who's like very much into the computer and like sees it as like a friend and stuff. And then similarly to Mieko, I got like my secret society and my power. And it just, I really wanted to take that to the extreme of like being, and I could tell that I was annoying people like, we're, this is an audio medium, but I have to say we're doing this over Zoom and the amount of eye rolls I got really directly correlated with how well I felt about my choices. <laughs> and whenever I, I would to get an eye roll, you so hard. it was so oh. great. Like to me, it was like, it was the easiest to get Corey to roll her eyes. And then... Uh, second level to me was Mieko. I got like <laughs> one or two and there was the hardest to get Todd because Todd would like, I could tell was invested in like this aggressive character. But once I, I forget, it. I think like, I forget <laughs> what it was. It was like once there was just this one time where I said something and simultaneously all three of you rolled your <laughs> eyes at the same time. And I was just like the Trinity. <laughs> It was interesting, too, because there was also like a little bit of like flirtation between Edward and Squick, which I was just something that I didn't expect. <laughs> he is a child. <laughs> you know, it's, I just cared a lot about Squick. I was just like, Squick is the youngest. Squick can't be hurt yet. I don't trust anyone else. Like, this is a young, innocent, worthwhile creature that I can bring to computer Jesus. <laughs> Can I briefly derail us and can I have everyone say what their power in secret society was? Because we didn't find out everyone's powers. Wait, I had a power? <laughs> That's another thing about the game is that the, the book and the, and the GM are supposed to be like, not everyone has a power, not everyone has a secret society, and everyone has to have a power and everyone has to have a secret society. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Yep. <laughs> Oh, even most of the characters that I designed, um, the NPCs were in secret societies. Um, some of them were secret societies we like didn't even talk about, but they were like they had multiple motives going on. Um, in terms of um, the GM handbook, they mentioned that like most NPCs shouldn't have powers, but they pretty much everyone's in a secret society. <laughs> I didn't realize they had a power. It's beautiful. Um, my power was anomaly, which I wanted to use when I made the very dumb fan rocket idea. <laughs> <laughs> I expected that that would go poorly. And so it was my intention that when it went poorly, I would use anomaly, which you burn a moxie, and then just things happen more. And usually in your favor is kind of how they describe it. <laughs> it's like things just happen more. But in the GM weird way, decide what exactly happens. Yeah. Um, so I was excited to like make that turbo lift, that one person turbo lift to like shoot up five feet, go horribly wrong, and then, or five stories rather, um, and then use anomaly to like somehow magically get to y'all properly. 
or explode the fan, one or the other. Um, my power was that I could turn invisible for a couple seconds. Um, and my secret society was that I was essentially a spy for a computer. Um, so I was reporting everything back to computer. But every time we got in combat, I forgot about my power. <laughs> I was like, dang, if only they couldn't see me. What could I do for that? Um, and then and then for Secret Society, I, I was paying attention to that. But everybody was so straightforward and good about stuff that I was like, I don't have anything to really sell you out to computer for. I just I can just sell out the NPCs because it like, you know, people had their other secret societies and stuff. But I was like, I I'm not supposed to know about that. So unless you do it in game, as l- unless your character says it, then I can't know about it to report you. I said it a lot in game. I was like nonstop talking about Bible study. But you also oh, were well, into it. Yeah, because I was like, oh, yeah, the computer. Like we both enjoy the computer. So that's that's what it is. I guess I'm just not very good at being a spy. <laughs> no, it was great. Well, it's so the the first church of computer programmer uh, of Jesus Christ computer programmer um, that secret society in the book is like a little more like uh, like great like they're like crazy and violent and I was like I don't actually think that's as interesting as having one person whose deal is just proselytizing. <laughs> Um, which is sort of like there's another secret society, which is the communists. And basically they just hand out like ancient communist propaganda for no reason. Um, so I sort of merged those two in terms of what I gave you, Ramana, for like what you do, because I thought like we have these three players with secret societies that are going to be specifically butting up against each other and having a fourth one uh, that is an X factor <laughs> might just do something strange, which it did. It absolutely did. <laughs> Just inviting y'all to Bible study over and over and yodeling. Oh, I loved the keening. That was a really (laughs) great moment. (laughs) And you and Ben started keening. That was like truly magical as someone who knows Ben very well and until playing together did not know you very well, Rumana. And that was like, oh, these people get each other real well. <laughs> we could see energy. It was, so it was good. great. I loved it. And I also just like really wanted to go all out because I was like, everybody else's introductions are really fun and interesting. And I'm like a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that like you're a quietly in a room. Too. Yes. When I had to deal with Coolbot73, the bitch. And Corey, did you say, do you say your power? No, I didn't yet. <laughs> Damn it. Um, so my power was pyrokinesis and I didn't use it once. <laughs> Cause I didn't realize I had it. You could I just really, oh, I was today so cool. years old when I realized I had that power. Two day years old. <laughs> Did you forget? I didn't read the full email. Oh, no. <laughs> I looked at the character sheets. <gasps> oh, no. I read the death love report, and then I got all the sheets. Because I was teaching. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> So the reason I brought that up was part of the character creation was once I figured out who all of you wanted to be roughly, because like in our meeting, like I, I got an idea of like, okay, this is the four character archetypes that we're getting. And you actually like together, you picked a very, very good squad of very different people. Like Miko, you were the like, you know, sort of conniving spy, like who wanted to like get up in the world. Corey, you were like sort of uh go with the flow, like, but completely like nervous inside <laughs> all the time. Um, just a ball of anxiety the whole time. Like Romano, you were just like, I'm going to be cool. Um, which is great. And Todd, you were like, uh, I have no idea. Like, I have no idea. I'm going to be completely like fresh and naive. And with those things, I was like, okay, I'm going to pick powers and societies that specifically speak to these characters and accentuate them so that during character creation, that can be where like, 
shit starts to go wrong. Um, that like I'm forcing you down the path that you wanted so that if something goes strange, it's going to like, or if like you don't get stats that you need, then it's going to be frustrating and you have to do really creative, strange things, uh, throughout, which I think Corey hit you the most, <laughs> which is why like your character always does like the strangest idea out of all of the ideas, which is great and fun to play. Um, and then I assigned the societies based on I knew that I wanted um, societies to be uh, fighting each other and that it was probably going to be um, the Illuminati and Death Leopard because it's like the agents of chaos and the agents of, uh, you know, some secret order fighting each other is fun. And I was like, OK, I'm going to, you know, do two. I thought it was going to be two and two. And then I realized, like. I want to pull you all apart, so I put you in different places, so. Um, <laughs> Um, one other thing I want to say about the Illuminati is that, um, g- can I just reveal like game secrets? Is that okay? Hell yeah. Please. Uh, so here's the deal with the Illuminati in the book. The, the Illuminati, so every secret society is actually like run by a high programmer, um, is the secret and they're using them to, um, further their own personal ends for society and like try to take over. Um, the Illuminati, however, is, uh, basically they just like are doing shit at random and they have no actual, like, I think they might have a leader, but I think they might not. Like they are basically just doing shit at random and they think that it's towards some greater end, but it's all like made up. There is no purpose to what they are doing. It is all completely chaotic and stupid, but they have they have this society of like fear and power that uh <laughs> right versus like the death leopards who their whole deal is like let's have a fun party this actually segs really well into my next question because i think the mechanic of like you don't know that everybody has a secret society but everybody has a secret society and you don't know that everyone has a mutant power but everybody has a mutant power feeds into the game's general like trying to make people feel paranoid so i wanted to ask if you as players felt yourselves experiencing actual paranoia. Did you ever consider attacking or assassinating or messing with the other players? Slash, did you? I I knew that the moment one of them really revealed their secret societies to me, I was going to sell them out. And the same thing with their mutant powers. The moment that this was going to happen, I was going to sell them out. But nobody really with the exception of Edward, who I didn't get, nobody really revealed that to me in game. So I didn't have the ability to do that. I felt like with, with my very naive character, um, who was just like, Hey, you're not an infrared anymore. Go (laughs) shove your broom in this thing, which he did. And then it exploded and killed a bunch of people. Um, and then he was like put in a group with a bunch of people where he was told like work with Corey Um, to do this thing. And I was like, okay. Um, And then, so I was like, cool, work with A to do the thing that I need to do. Uh, And then I was just like, okay, I'm going to stick with A until we get the thing. And we got the the nerve cluster. Um, And then I was like, I messaged Corey um, at the end as we're like walking down the hallway to the finish line. And I was like, do, do we, what... Do we kill people? Do we not kill people? <laughs> do we, I don't I don't really want to start nothing, but like I guess I do what I'm told, but I'm getting conflicting information. <laughs> what do and Corey was like, no, we're not doing that. And I was like, okay, great. I just hated Pleats so much. <laughs> we didn't want to give it a <laughs> Literally it was like we should, but like fuck that guy so much. I'm really just ooh, ooh. <clears throat> If if we continued this game, I think what I would do story wise would be try to recruit all of you into Insec because like of the way that you operated as a crew, like it became like two of you quit your secret societies. <laughs> um, so like <laughs> you got to have one. And like, I think the way that Edward was playing with their secret society was not contradictory to being in another one. So it was like, okay, it can actually just be its own thing. And then plus. I think the only thing Edward was really paranoid about was if they were the tallest. (laughs) Just every single time a new NPC was introduced, the first thing I would think is they're not taller than Edward, right? That was like number one thing I was paranoid about. You vetted every single NPC's height right away. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I was just like, first thing, hi. Second, have you heard about Jesus? <laughs> it's the two things you got to know about everybody that you meet. Um. <laughs> I mean, that's all I have on my Tinder profile. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> John. <laughs> Um, as players, is there anything looking back that you would do differently or try differently if you were to kind of do this all over again? I definitely feel like it's funny. It's like, uh, I wasn't sure that we were at the like final boss, um, when we were at the final boss. Um, and so I felt like I was cagey at least in our like first play session about doing things that were like too risky. Um, and then when we got into that final fight, I was like ready to risk it all, but either like the dice worked in my favor or like something else happened. Um, but I feel like given that you can die and come back, um, I felt like I would have played with that mechanic more, especially since I think I had the most clones at that point. Um, and I would have been like, I was ready to Jerry rig this wind cannon into something that would blow up in my face on accident. And I was like ready to deal with those repercussions. I was fine with it. Um, and so I think I would have been like even risky er as a troubleshooter um, if we did it again. I think I would have been more ambitious in trying to root out everybody's secret societies. I think I would have asked more questions, um, been a little bit more insightful and I would have used my power, my mutant power to a better effect. Um, yeah, I think in that very first battle, uh, when, when, um, was it, who was it? they were shooting at us. Oh, um, uh, Dev and Brat. When Dev and Brat were shooting at us and instead of using my armor as a shield for everybody, which got me injured, I'm still mad about that. I would have just turned myself invisible so they couldn't see me. Um, a fun thing about that, by the way, um, one of the few book mechanics we did use, like, perfectly by the book was the armor, because all armor is fake. What? What? <laughs> book? What the hell? It was so expensive. I'm so happy I bought a duster instead of armor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just up I'm, I'm always Jesus. a person who's like, when I play D and D or when I play other games, I'm like, okay, I have to armor myself up. I have to suit myself up. I have to have plenty of potions at the ready. I'm very prepared to like heal myself and defend myself. So to learn that that the armor was fake, it makes me very angry. Like that that causes paranoia for me. Just like the the uh, rifle, like that's fake too. It's just you know, it, like basically, I made it like okay, great. It's like a plastic sight that you put on top of your gun. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm betrayed. That was a core element of my identity. Just long gun. <laughs> yeah, and that was red an duster, long only. gun. <laughs> oh, you got got. I got got. <laughs> I love that Ben has chosen not to drop all of the tea in one place, but is just sprinkling it in and making everybody very mad occasionally. I oh, love it. Um, I have one last question. Um, what parts of the game were most engaging for you all as players or as the GM? I think the part that was most engaging for me was the dialogue between everybody and trying to just have this Trying to, you know, we were playing the game, but really the highlight of the game for me was just interacting with everybody and their characters. Mm -hmm. Um, Because the way the character creation works, you have negative stats and stuff that you will be quite bad at. Um, And the way the node system works is also just like nifty and weird, but it made you have to think about like, how would I with my like weird janky stats do this thing that I kind of want to do. Whereas like in, in other games, it's like, Oh, I want to do a perception check. Of course I can like try a perception check and it will like probably be okay. And like, even if I have a negative stat modifier, like I could roll really well and still do good on this thing. Whereas this is like, no, you have to figure out a way to like, you're only good at engineering. How does that apply in this situation? (laughs) 
Um, or like, how do you math this really hard? Uh, which I think led to me um, thinking more about like the surroundings and the situation that we were in and how I could use my player brain to like figure out how I could best try to affect change in that. I a hundred percent agree. I think the thing that's interesting about the entire, I like threw in plus five for guns is like a wild card thing. I was just like, I have this plus five. I've got pretty good stats on everything else that I wanted. Why not throwing guns? And that ended up being the stat that I regularly turned back to. And like I said, I like made this long gun a part of my personality because like I needed to figure out how I could quite literally gun my way out of a problem because that got me the most nodes. And like they all like it's it's true. Restriction inspires creativity. So like when you're all of a sudden you have a problem you, like finding that solution with what you have instead of going, oh, I hope I'm lucky enough that like creativity allows for chance to be much more interesting because it's not just like, oh, I hope I perceive this thing. I hope I get a good investigation check. It's instead, okay, my friend is hanging and I have a gun plus five. I'll shoot my way over. And ho- like, then the stakes are higher because you're using this like creative solution to, for something. Awesome. Uh, Cass, do you have any questions for Ben? Can I play again soon? Please. <laughs> Can I play again soon? Please. I would. Yeah. Yeah. This would be fun. Cool. I have revealed a lot of the secrets to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into like the next. We go into the next campaign <laughs> being just like no one buy armor. I don't know why, but I have a bad <laughs> feeling about all the armor. The next campaign will just be called Reboot. <laughs> and it's just a completely different software. This is like when you go from Mojave to Catalina. Nothing works. It's completely different. It's just music isn't even there anymore. It's this fine. is the second campaign we've had that everybody wanted to continue after it was done. And I think that's very wholesome. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just, it's fun and it's a weird world and there's more mechanics for us to explore still. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just more world. Like the, I feel like there are some things that we only scratched at the surface of in terms of like the, the world of computer and uh, we're only reds. Who knows? Yeah what yeah, a yeah. yellow or an orange or a green might think i would have liked to like spend more time just around i feel like we were on just one path like we got to be in our own little pre-setting pre-existing scenarios and then it was just like we were stuck together for the whole time it's just like maybe we want to go deviate and do some more things i would have liked more time to just like independently build a little bit more because once you're all together as a group, you're kind of like constantly just like getting tiny little bites, 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 bites. I have a question for Ben. If you were going to do this again, um, like start from the beginning over again, what is one thing you would have leaned harder on? Um, I would have made, I would have hurt you all a lot more. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I like, my I, legs. because. <laughs> But like uh, you were the only one who died. Um, I mean, I, I did the I, I killed everyone in the first, but that was you know it, as you could tell that was pre planned. That was a like I'm going to find a way for you to all die in the same way in the in a like time in the same time. Even if you succeed, like I'm going to make one of your successes the reason for someone else's death. Like, <laughs> like Ramana, you succeeded so hard <laughs> that, that was, like that was I basically retconned something. To be that, like, because you threw the bomb down with also with all the with the car, like, that's what killed everyone else. <laughs> um, what do you think the like n- nature of Alpha Complex as a world is, particularly like with regards to like the computer and what its motivations are? Ooh. That's a good question. 
I mean, I was thinking a kind of, I don't know why, I don't think there's any basis for this, but I was imagining a very Aeon Flux sort of like city state um, that has been set up and the rest of the world has just like gone back to pasture. Um, But there's this like, city state place that is alpha complex um that like the outside was poisonous and we have like built this thing um to like maybe fix that and then we forgot what we were doing along the way Mm -hmm. i was imagining just like one giant warehouse like has anybody been to sam's club Mm -hmm. yeah i just imagined that we were all stuck in like a gigantic sam's club a never ending <laughs> Sam's Club <laughs> for the duration of this. Oh, game. I did my storytelling right. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of how I envision it too, by the way, in terms of visually, is like a big awful box store. <laughs> and then as far as whatever happens outside of the Sam's Club, I felt like I it didn't really matter. I just felt like this was where all humans existed, was just in this one um area and that computer had built this computer had staffed this computer was involved in it so like it's its own little world i was thinking more like matrix <laughs> like not necessarily when they dial in but just like the shitty real world that they live in where it's just like here's some slop and like we're around it's like everything's kind of dark and grungy and there's oil leaking from the ceiling i don't know that's how i kind of like the vibe that i got from that but also with like the little, especially with the maintenance spots, it kind of imagines the ones from Wally that were like cleaning the floor. So a mixture of those. Corey, you and Romana know a little more than everyone else um, because of the uh, characters yes. that you played. Yes. <laughs> to fit. Um, yeah. Uh, so before the two of you answer because you know a little more, um, Todd and Miyako, what do you think uh, those uh, when? Uh, when ears were being spoken into, when A was speaking to Cordy and Edward was speaking to A, what do you think that was and what was happening? I have zero idea. <laughs> I was just like, this is a thing to do. Um, I will get more information so that way I can sell whoever this is out to computer. Um, yeah. Oh God, I wish you had. I really wish you had. <laughs> <laughs> um I imagined it like AOL instant messenger in your HUD. And it seemed I mean it seemed a little like spam, but I assumed that there were ulterior motives. So I also thought it was maybe like a pop-up that you would get a virus if you clicked on. Was kind of the vibe I was getting from it. Korean and Ramon are both like, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm here for that, but they're not wrong, wrong, but they're not. No, right. not totally. <laughs> yeah. So what I'll, what I'll say um, for the audience to know is that thing is the whole reason everything happened um, in this whole story. Um, it was a basically a, yeah, it was basically a sentient computer virus that its personal goal is to like burn the computer out of all the server's uh, uh, alpha complex wide oh. and take over. Um, and it's like a recent creation of something. And so like, that's why it was trying to get in places and also blow places up. Um, it was behind the like weird dude that Edward killed at the very beginning. Um, who, as you might remember, had the power that, uh, Cordy got at the end, the, uh, the full anonymity where you turn on your tunnel head and you disappear for everyone, uh, except for your like visual, um, which I also thought was cool that you got because then you could have been completely off the grid <laughs> if you wanted to. Super rogue. Um, which like now you're like uber, uber powerful. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's what that was and uh what you were doing if to each we other. Because you were you were infecting each other with a computer virus by talking to each other. As like a multi, like a multi-campaign arced like follow these characters as they like grow and do all of this. I I, like, I thought that that could be like the very big bad that like we were slowly putting it or keeping it away from different parts of alpha complex. And then 
depending on what we did by the end, like that would be the big bad we'd have to deal with to save our yeah. home. That means a big, a good point about how, I mean, if there was something that I could do over again, I would definitely have gone full force because I was immediately my mind jumped to the long game. So I'm like, I'm going to play nice with these people. So that way in the long game, I can sell them out or I'm going to do this thing that this mysterious voice says. So that way in the long game, I can get more information so I can sell it out. Um, I was so cute to you. You were so (laughs) cute, but listen, my loyalty to computer is never ending. Um, So, yeah, if I had this to do over again, I would have been a lot more vicious, a lot more duplicitous. Um, ramp it up next immediately time. <laughs> because I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I will say, though, in, in game terms, like you played it so well that like you put yourself like at the top with the computer and okay. with the like system itself such that like yeah like that was an in character excellent series of choices that you made because also like you are you know you have now you have powers and trust and allegiances that are like the most powerful out of anyone's hearing those uh story hooks uh makes me want to play more for sure oh. um like that's very exciting and seeing that there were uh things that we wouldn't have been able to solve even in this limited game is fun that there's like more out there. I guess when I was designing this game for everyone, I part of my part of the conversations we were having, like Percy, Nick, Todd and I at the very beginning were like, should this be like a contained story? Should this be like, what should this be? And all three of them were like, it should be a game. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I'm going to try to do as much of a story as I can in like, what is a game? And the people who really told the story were you, which was just wonderful. I think that's a very wholesome note to end on. Thank you all for joining us for this campaign of paranoia. Yeah. It was truly a delight. Thank you. Dungeons and Dominers is produced by Todd Brian Backus, Percy Hornack, and Nick Orvis, and is mixed and edited by Anthony Sertel Dean. Saving 73 JPEGs I Desperately Need, our Paranoia Campaign, is written and GM'd by Ben Ferber and features Todd Brian Backus as Squick RBDE002, Corey Flores as AR Violence 3, Mieko Gavia as QWERTY RABC3, and Romana Isabella as Edward RNRV02. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at dndramanerds and on Facebook at Dungeons and Drama Nerds. For cast bios, head to our website, dungeonsanddramanerds.com. Tune in next week for a new commentary episode. Mm-hmm.